Greetings and salutations, everybody out there in America, United States, California, the world, anybody that is listening to this, I hope that you're having a good day. Um, so, my day started off pretty unique in that I got a vaccine for the coronavirus. So, that's one of these things that we're going to see happening a lot, you know, post-Trump and this new administration is a, a plan for rolling out the vaccine. So, that's a good thing. But I'm going to give a list of five things that are going to make the United States better again. So let's replace MAGA with USABA, United States of America better again. So, yeah, great is nice, but there's a lot of negative connotations in that term. So let's come up with a new term and something that will unify us. Unify us and unite us towards a greater goal. Speaking of goals, I think one of the things I learned in life is that you always have to be chasing a goal, whether it's a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a yearly goal. Governments have goals, they have plans, and some of them seem sinister, but I think this administration should have a four-year plan and they should have an eight-year plan. So let's talk about a four-year plan for the next administration. And obviously, when you're talking politics, it's not just the president. They're part of the... Uh, one of three branches. So there's an executive branch made up of the heads of government, like mayors, governors, and presidents. And then there's a legislative branch, which oftentimes has two levels. Like uh, Congress will have a House of Representatives based off of a population and a Senate, maybe based off of just a set amount. So each state has an equal strength in a Senate, where a House of Representatives, you have more strength based off of your state population. So to give you a little more of a background, there's another check and balance in a, a democracy called the judiciary branch. So their job is not to create the laws like Congress, and their job is not to enforce the laws like the heads of states, like the governor, mayor, and president. They sign the laws. That's all they really do. The main job of the judiciary branch is to, uh, you know, to uphold the law and to make sure um, to, you know, judge and make sure that every law that's getting passed is legit. So that's why we're seeing a lot of these cases in the Supreme Court uh, for the election, because ultimately they can decide whether or not something is, you know, going down correctly. So here's five things, okay? Um, I'll preface it with, yeah, I've generally lived a pretty liberal lifestyle, and I've seen, you know, how people live good and how people live bad, and it's hard to see people who live bad. So most of my policies are going to revolve around helping those people. So the first thing is free health care. You know, if it's Obamacare, whatever. If it's not Obamacare, if it's like Trump said, you know, like maybe vouchers for good working uh, insurances. Yeah, but something that provides free insurance for every living American. Uh, the number two thing is free education. So you can see here I'm on a theme of free this, free that, and you have to pay for it through taxes. So there has to be a different, like, brackets for each individual I pay like what 25% I can pay more you know I mean I want to look down the street and see people that are living okay just like me uh, number three is free food um, it's going to go along with my next thing of free housing so you got four things there and the fifth thing has to be um, legit punishment for um, firearms so I believe in the second amendment Everybody should have a weapon. But if there is some sort of crime committed with a weapon, the penalties have to be a lot more extreme. So there's my five things to make the United States better again. We need free health care again. That was a great idea. Number two. <laughs> Number one was free health care. Number two is free education. Okay, we shouldn't be lagging behind other countries because we're afraid to spend money to educate our children. They're our future, and you could see that. I mean, there's things that I believe that I'm pretty sure my daughter's going to be way better than I am with computers, so it's just, it's part of the nature. That's what we use now. Number three, free food. Okay, food stamps can replace unemployment benefits, or like there's got to be some sort of, excuse me, it's pretty chilly and I'm just sitting in my car, so you know, I got to wipe a booger. But anyways, um, you know, it's like, why can't you just have free food for everybody? Force people to be vegetarians or whatever, but give them food. And four, give them housing. 
Like, I see surplus of housing that's not used correctly. Everybody deserves a roof over their head. And they'll have to earn it one way or another, or they will lack benefits. And number five is just like a, a like a, you know, from what I studied in poli sci, you need three things for an efficient democracy. You need freedom, equality, and order. So I think the freedom to make money and succeed, you know, we can do that with less tariffs. That's more of like a macro policy, something that our government will have to do for, like, for you know, trade and, like, all kinds of products, not just, like, individuals. But, you know, besides the freedom, you need equality. Everybody has to have a chance. So let's give people, you know, a little bit more money in their pockets if they're not equal to some of our hardworking rich billion and trillionaires. And then number three is order. So that's why my number five focuses on, you know, I don't want a police state. I don't want to defund the police, but I want to have some sort of punishment system that's a little more efficient. So I see lawyers dictating, you know, um, our judiciary system, tying stuff up, and, you know, the courts costing millions of dollars. Let's just make it more efficient, okay? I'm not a legal expert. I'd love to speak to a couple of them. You know, I do know some people that I've worked with and been really good friends with that I'd love to get their opinion on, like, how to make the legal system more efficient, but more, like, make the punishment more substantial. Like, I don't want to throw somebody in in jail for life for selling some crack, you know? Like, that's a little, like, the socioeconomic situation could have put in there. But if you pull a trigger and you kill somebody, I don't care how old you are, somebody's going to get punished. So if your five-year-old kid pulls the trigger, the parent's going to jail. And if the parent pulls the trigger, man, I don't even want to think about what kind of punishment they get. But just lock them up, throw them somewhere and make them work and just make them work hard for the rest of their lives. Or at least 40 years or 50 years so they could figure it out. But, man, I think our country has a lot of things that protect people. We have freedoms to protect us from a lot of things. But really, when you create those sort of capital punishments, you throw all that out the door. So number five is a significant thing for me because it goes away from my liberal thinking. It's more of like a protection of the state, you know. So, okay, there's my five things. I hope you guys think it's positive, you know. Protect the kids and the education. Protect the sick and the elderly. Make sure they have food and housing. So this is a policy for those that are the have-nots. The haves, I have suggestions for you guys. It requires automation and maybe like a universal income but I think automation is the way to go, and working in IT, I could, you know, definitely give some suggestions. Peace out!